Hey there, today we're gonna get a behind the scenes look at a mirror maze, numbers in nature, with the person responsible for putting on this exhibition at Science World in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, curator Parker McLean. Hey Parker. Hey. Are you ready to go? Yeah, let's go. All right, I'll follow you. Sweet, come on in. So Parker, what can we expect to learn at a mirror maze, numbers in nature exhibition? Well, you can totally expect to explore and discover the mathematical structures behind beautiful patterns that you can see around you all the time in nature. So things like uh, spirals and fractals, like you kind of find, see fractals in the bronchioles and the structure of your lungs and in uh, how trees branch out. And you'll also see the golden ratio and golden spirals. And there's something called the golden angle, which uses that ratio to give you things like how a pine cone is laid out. And it's pretty cool. So what if I don't know a lot about math? You definitely don't need to know a lot about math to appreciate the beauty and notice the beauty and the patterns in nature. Do you know a lot about math? I studied physics and math in university, but uh, math is a huge, huge field. And so I didn't really do a deep dive into any of the patterns that we explore in the gallery, except for fractals a little bit. It definitely crops up when you're graphing chaos theory. Do you eat a lot of broccoli because it's a fractal? <laughs> I definitely do. I'm a huge advocate for playing with my food. So it definitely takes me a lot longer to eat broccoli than it does other people. <laughs> what are some favorite patterns and why? Fractals are my favorite. And why? Um, well, it's because I love the idea of an infinitely repeating, infinitely complex in scale uh, geometry. And so uh, fractal, a lot of the times you can zoom in infinitely and you get the same pattern over again. So spirals can be an example of fractals if it keeps going in and in. So you can zoom in into the center infinitely and you still see that same spiral repeating over and over again. Where are some unexpected places you've discovered patterns? Mm. So I was in Queen Elizabeth Park this one time at dusk. So I ended up needing my phone light to look around. And I saw this huge, amazing plant. We don't have them in Ontario where I come from. This is like dinosaur snack plant. And it's super cool. And it actually has the texture of uh, like a cat's tongue. And what I did was I brought my light pretty close. And I saw these really cool shadows. And I brought it even closer and underneath. And it turned this huge leaf into a lantern. And uh, a lot of patterns actually become apparent when you put a light underneath. So a lot like this sea urchin, oh yeah, this sea urchin skeleton right here. And what really comes out in this is the pentasymmetry. Ah, amazing. Awesome. So if the golden ratio is the easiest way for nature to arrange things, does that mean that nature is lazy? <laughs> yeah, and so are the physicists who aim to calculate these things. And if you could carry your house around on your back like a snail, would you because it's a spiral? No. What does the Science Museum curator do exactly? So the curator of a feature exhibition at Science World, of a traveling exhibition at Science World, uh, is really a content specialist. So I get the privilege of doing deep dive into the content and story that this gallery tells. And with that, I get to train our floor staff as well as develop activities that our floor staff are going to engage our visitors with. What is your favorite part about being a curator? Uh, it's really it's really amazing to see our floor staff engaging visitors with things that I've developed, things that I've created and brought into the space. And my favorite thing about that is really seeing them engage visitors in ways that I didn't expect or predict, where they bring their own passions into it. What's your least favorite part about being a curator? Well, I was actually floor staff about a year ago. And uh, I really do miss doing shows and being on the floor, engaging with visitors all the time. Uh, and so my least favorite part about curating a gallery is that I can't actually be here engaging visitors every hour of the day. What other job might you have had if you weren't a curator at Science World? A science busker. All right. <laughs> and would you ever put fractal art over your couch? I actually do have tapestry over my bed and so it would be totally something that I would put in my room or over my couch. When someone turns a Fibonacci number like 3, 5, 8, or 13, do you send them a card that says happy fifth birthday? No, but uh, I just might start. And if a visitor learns only one thing in this gallery, what do you hope it is? That if they take the time to notice and explore the world around them, they're going to find some pretty wonderful things. All right. Well, it has been amazing, Parker. I hope you have a great day. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You too. Have a good one. Bye.